dears, welcome back to our science class. I hope all of you are fine there. As you know, in the previous session, we have discussed about the products of coal. Today, in this session, we are going to discuss about another fossil fuel that is petroleum. I think all of you are familiar with the term petroleum. The name petroleum means rock oil. It is a oil. That means petroleum is a liquid and it is dark in color and it is a thick crude oil. Petroleum is dark colored, thick crude oil. Crude means uh, we know that petroleum contains a lot of useful products but they are not separated then they, we use the term crude. Crude means Petroleum is not separated into different different useful compounds. It is in the crude form. Petroleum is a dark color, thick crude oil and it is having an unpleasant odor. Odor means smell. It is having a bad smell and it is not a simple compound. It is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the compounds which contains two elements. What are they? Hydrocarbons. That is, hydrocarbons contains the two elements, hydrogen and carbon. Petroleum is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the compounds which contains two elements, hydrogen and carbon. And it is insoluble in water. That is, it is not soluble in water. And petroleum is a natural resource. We are familiar with the term natural resource, which means the materials or substance which are occurring in nature are the natural resources. Petroleum is a natural resource. And it is obtained from oil. Wells. What are oil wells? Oil wells are the holes which are dug into the earth. From there we get petroleum. Petroleum is obtained from the oil wells. Oil wells means holes that are dug into the earth. This is the earth and when a hole is dug into the earth, then they are called the oil wells and from there we get petroleum. Petroleum is a dark color, thick crude oil. Crude means it is not in the refined or separated form. It is crude and it is having an unpleasant smell and it is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons and it is insoluble in water and it is a natural resource and it is obtained from oil wet. Uh, I will repeat it once again. The term petroleum means a rock oil. It is a liquid. Petroleum means a rock oil. And petroleum is dark color and it is a thick crude oil. It is dark in color and it is a thick crude oil. Crude oil means it, is, uh, it contains a lot of useful compounds but they are not refined or separated. Therefore, petroleum is in the crude form. It contains a lot of useful products, but they are not separated. Then they, we use the term crude. Crude means it is not separated. And it is having an unpleasant smell. And it is a complex mixture of hydrocarbons. Hydrocarbons are the compounds which contains two elements, hydrogen and carbon and it is uh, insoluble in water that is it is not soluble in water and it is a natural resource that is petroleum is occurring in the nature and it is obtained from oil wells oil wells means a hole which is dug into the earth and from there we get petroleum petroleum is obtained from the oil wells okay Next topic is how petroleum was formed. 
Students, we know that just like coal, petroleum is also a fossil fuel. So, obviously, it is formed as very similar as the coal was formed. Petroleum was formed by the decomposition of the remains of tiny plants and animals buried under the sea millions of years. Which means petroleum is formed from the remains of sea creatures. What are the sea creatures? Sea creatures like small small plants, fishes and small animals in the sea. When they died, what will happen? It will settle at the bottom of the sea and gradually got covered by sand, mud, clay, etc. Okay, these dead remains are gradually covered by soil, clay, mud, etc. Over millions of years, what will happen? Due to the high temperature, pressure and by the absence of the air, these dead remains of plants and animals slowly converted into petroleum. How this petroleum is formed? The dead remains of sea creatures are settled down at the bottom of the sea or ocean and gradually got covered by mud, soil, clay. And over millions of years, what will happen due to the high temperature, pressure and in the absence of the air, these dead remains of plants and animals slowly converted into Petroleum. Thus, the petroleum thus formed is trapped between two layers of impervious rocks. What are the impervious rocks? Impervious rocks means non-porous rocks. Non-porous means porous means holes. So, non-porous that is there is no holes in the rocks and the petroleum thus formed is trapped between two layers of impervious rocks thereby forming oil deposits. So the formation of petroleum is not a very easy method. It will take millions of years. I will explain it once again. Petroleum is formed from the dead remains of the sea creatures like tiny plants and animals. As they die, what will happen? They will settle down at the bottom of the sea and gradually got covered by sand, clay, mud, etc. Due to the high temperature and pressure, over millions of years, what will happen? Due to the high temperature and pressure and due to the absence of the air, these dead remains gradually converted into the petroleum. And this petroleum is trapped between two layers of impervious rocks. Impervious means non-porous, that is no holes. This petroleum is trapped between two impervious rocks, thereby forming oil deposits. Petroleum, petroleum was formed from the dead remains of the sea creatures. And this petroleum is trapped between two layers of impervious rocks and thereby forming oil deposits and the petroleum formation uh, takes millions of years. Petroleum formation is not a single day process. It will take millions of years. Okay. The next topic is occurrence and extraction of petroleum. Students, we know that Petroleum is occur deep under the earth's surface between two layers of impervious rocks. A figure is given in your textbook page number 84. There you can see petroleum. Here is a petroleum which is trapped between two impervious rocks. These are the impervious rocks. In between these impervious rocks, the petroleum is trapped, isn't it? There are two layers of impervious rocks. In between these impervious rocks, petroleum is trapped. 
Okay. And uh, petroleum is lighter than water. Therefore, it will float over the water. That is, in between the impervious layer, there is three particles present. What are they? First one is water, second one is petroleum and above that natural gas is present. We, we know that petroleum is lighter than water. Therefore, petroleum is present over the water and natural gas. Natural gas is found above the petroleum. The order is natural gas, petroleum and then water. Above the water, petroleum is present. Above the petroleum, natural gas is present. How this petroleum is taken out of these impervious rocks? Using an equipment called the drilling rig. Drilling rig is an equipment which dug the earth's crust by that is called the oil wells. Oil wells are the holes which are deep, which are dug into the earth using an equipment called the drilling rig. When we drill the earth's surface, what will happen? Natural gas is present first. So it will comes out with a high pressure. We want petroleum. How we will get petroleum first? Natural gas comes out with a high pressure. When that pressure is minimizes, this petroleum gradually comes out of these impervious rocks. Thereby we get petroleum. This is for today's class. I hope the concepts are clear to you. In the next video, we will discuss about the refining of petroleum and various fractions of petroleum and their uses. Thank you. Hello dears, once again welcome back to our science class. In the previous session, we have discussed about the formation, occurrence and extraction of petroleum. In this session, we are going to discuss about the refining of petroleum. Before that, students, we know that the oil that we extract in the earth are also known as crude oil or petroleum, isn't it? Usually, this crude oil is a mixture of a large number of hydrocarbons and unwanted impurities. So, we need to separate it. So, the process of separating crude petroleum oil into more useful fraction is called refining. Okay, so refining is the pro separate process of separation. This process of separation is known as refining. This the petroleum that we obtained or extracted in the earth is called crude oil or petroleum. And this crude oil contains a lot of hydrocarbons and unwanted impurities. So we need to separate or purify petroleum and that process of separating the crude petroleum into more useful fraction is called the refining. And this refining is carried out in oil refineries. The figure is given in your textbook. The petroleum, the separation of petroleum is carried out in oil refineries. Okay. The petroleum that we extracted from the oil wells are taken to the oil refineries through huge pipes. Okay. In the oil refineries, this petroleum are separated into various useful fractions. The separation is carried out in the oil refineries and in the oil refineries, the petroleum is converted or separated into useful fractions. These are the various useful fractions obtained from petroleum. What are they? Petroleum gas, petrol, kerosene, diesel, lubricating oil, paraffin, wax and bitter. So these are the useful fractions that are obtained from the petroleum and these are separated from the petroleum by the process of fractional distillation. Okay, fractional distillation is a separating technique 
which is used to separate these useful fractions from petroleum. I will explain you once again. Here we are discussing about the refining of petroleum. The crude petroleum oil that we extracted in the earth contains a lot of impurities and a different number of hydrocarbons. So we need to purify it because it contains a lot of unwanted impurities. So we need to purify it. So the process of separating crude petroleum oil into more useful fraction is called refining. So refining is the Separating, separating process. The process of separation is called uh, refining and this refining is carried out in the oil uh, refineries. The petroleum or the crude oil that we extract in the earth is taken to the oil refineries through huge pipe. What is happening in that oil refinery? In the oil refineries, petroleum are separated into various useful fractions. These are the useful fractions. In the oil refineries, petroleums are separated into petroleum gas, petrol, kerosene, diesel, lubricating oil, paraffin, wax and bitumen. These are the various useful fractions obtained from the petroleum. Okay, these are separated from the petroleum by the process of fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is a separating technique which is used to separate petroleum into these useful fractions. Okay, so the separation of petroleum into different fractions is done by the process of fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is a separating technique which is used to separate petroleum into different fractions. What is the basis of fractional distillation? Fractional distillation is based on the difference in the boiling point of the components. We know that Petroleum is a mixture of these components and all these have different different boiling points too. So, when we heat the crude oil or petroleum, which is a mixture of these components, what will happen? The component or the substance with lower boiling point starts boiling first and separated, is collected separately. Okay, I will repeat it once again. Fractional distillation is a separating technique which is used to separate petroleum into various useful fractions. Okay, the basis of the fractional distillation is or fractional distillation is based on the difference in the boiling point. The crude oil is a mixture of these fractions and all these have different different boiling points. So when we heat the crude oil, what will happen? The substance with the lower boiling point starts boiling first and then collected separately. This is the basis of the fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is based on the difference in the boiling point of these components. All these components have different different boiling point. When we heat this crude oil, what will happen? The substance with the lower boiling point starts boiling first and comes out first and which is collected separately. This is the fractional distillation. Okay. The next topic is various fractions of petroleum and their uses. First one is petroleum gas. It is usually used in its liquefied form and we call it as liquefied petroleum gas that is LPG. It is used in our homes for various cooking purposes. So petroleum gas is used as a fuel in homes and industries. Petroleum gas is used as a fuel in homes for to cook foods and is also used as a fuel in industries. And the second one is 
familiar with you that is petrol it is used as a fuel in motor vehicles such as cars motorcycles scooters etc and it is also used as a solvent for dry cleaning where the clothes are cleaned without the solvent water we use petrol petrol is used as a motor fuel and it is also used as a solvent for dry cleaning and the third one is kerosene kerosene is used as a fuel for stoves to cook food and it is also used as a fuel for lighting purpose that is it is used in lamps and the second use is kerosene are aviation fuels that is when you travel by flight remember that the fuel that is being used is kerosene so kerosene is used as a aviation fuel and the fourth one is diesel diesel is used in heavy motor vehicles such as bus trucks and tractors and it is also used as a fuel in electric generators what are electric generators electric generators provides electricity during power cuts so in the electric generators we use diesel as fuel second one is lubricating oil this is used for the lubrication in machines and engines the lubricating oils which helps to reduce the friction that's why we are the that's why we are lubricating machines and their engines and the sixth one is paraffin wax it is used for making candles vaseline ointments grease etc and the seventh one is bitumen it is extremely used for the construction of roads and it is used as for water proofing the roofs of buildings it is used for water proofing the roofs of the buildings and it is also used in the making of the black paints okay diesel is a used as a fuel in heavy motor vehicles such as buses trucks tractors and it is also used uh, as a fuel in electric generators and second fifth one is lubricating oil which is used to lubricate machines and engines in order to reduce the friction and the sixth one is paraffin wax which is used for making candles vaseline ointments grease etc and the seventh one is the bitumen which is extremely used extremely used in the construction of the uh, roads that is road surfacing and it is used for the water proofing the roofs of the buildings and it is also used in the used in making black paints let us talk about liquefied petroleum gas that is lpg this is the most common fuel used in our homes for cooking purposes isn't it and the major component of the lpg is butane that is c4 h10 butane is a hydrocarbon that is it contains carbon and hydrogen okay and this lpg is obtained from petroleum and it is liquefied that is lpg gas is liquefied by compression before filling into the gas cylinders that's why they are called liquefied petroleum gas lpg is the most common fuel used in our homes and the major component of the lpg is butane and it is obtained from petroleum and it is liquefied by compression okay when we turn on the knob of the gas cylinder the pressure is released and the volatile lpg is converted into gas and this gas goes into the burner of the stove when we show a burning candle at the mouth of the burner what will happen it burns with a blue flame thereby producing a lot of heat and this heat is used for our cooking purposes okay liquid petroleum gas is a good fuel because of the following 
advantages. Let's see what are the advantages of liquid petroleum gas. First one is LPG burns easily. So it produces heat easily. And LPG has high calorific value. Calorific value means the amount of heat produced. Here LPG has high calorific value. That is LPG produces a lot of heat energy and it does not cause air pollution. That is it is eco friendly. That is it is environment friendly and it does not causes any air pollution. It does not produce any poisonous gases. Therefore there is there will be no health issues. And it does not leave behind any solid residue on bin. So it is a clean fuel. Therefore it does not behind any solid residues on bin. These are the advantages of LPG. LPG burns easily and it has high calorific value. That is it produces a lot of heat energy. And it does not cause any air pollution. That is it is environment friendly. And it does not produce any poisonous gases. That is gases which are not poisonous to our, our. And it does not leave behind any solid residues on bay. That is it is a clear fuel. Therefore it produces, does not produce any solid residues on bay. This is for today's class. I hope all the concepts are clear to you. Thank you.